Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to be shooting this uh, uh, M&P Shield 9. Uh, it's been my everyday carry gun for about the last eight months. Um, so I'm going to shoot this and then we'll talk a little bit about it. about this gun like i said i've been carrying this for about eight months um before this i was carrying the ruger lcp which was a 380 and what happened is when the whole coronavirus uh riots uh bs started i said you know what? let me carry something with a little bit more firepower the other thing is that 380 ammo uh became almost impossible to find uh also very expensive when you could find it uh nine millimeter i could still you know get a lot of even though the price went up on it i you know haven't you know there was never a time that i could not get nine millimeter uh so that's part of the reason why i decided to switch over to a nine millimeter uh handgun now the gun is a little bit bigger so there was a little bit of a uh, um you know of again getting used to carrying a larger gun okay i, I generally don't live in a um, um in a, um, a high risk area i don't do high risk things so you know, I generally don't expect to ever need to use a gun for, for self-defense. But, uh, you know, you know, with the whole coronavirus nonsense that, that started in the riots, I said, you know what, let me just upgrade to something a little bit, a little bit more powerful with a little bit more firepower. Um, now, this, uh, this comes with uh, two magazines. Uh, you get a seven-rounder and an eight-rounder. Okay, normally I carry this with a, fact, with a factory seven-round magazine, and I carry the... Oops, and I carry it with the eight round magazine uh, in reserve on my belt, right? Um, but one of the great things about this uh, the shield is that you can get these ETS magazines on Botox, uh, Botox.com really, really cheap. They're like, I think like 10, to be somewhere between 10 and $13. And you, can, you can plant these magazines you can plant these magazines, like you can plant spares in your car, in your, in your shop, in your house, you know, places where you think you might need it. So even though you're carrying a gun that only holds seven or eight rounds, um, because you can plant these magazines all over the place, you know, you, you have access to instant additional firepower, you know, if, if you should ever need it. So that, that's another reason why I really like carrying this, uh, this Shield 9. Now, uh, one of the things I did is I did change the sights on it. I put the uh, the True Glow night sights. I mean, they're not super bad. They're not like great. I mean, I've seen brighter sights, but they do work. I mean, they're you know at night I can't see the sights. I can, you know, because the sights that came with it you, you couldn't see anything at night. Um, I've seen brighter night sights. I mean, these are just enough so that you can see your sights and get them on target, and they're fine. I mean, I, you know, I'm able to, to hit the targets uh, without uh, without any difficulty. Um, it's it's a, you know I've shot probably a few hundred rounds on this on this gun. Um, I have heard of other people having shot thousands of rounds on it, and it's a very durable gun. It, it's built well. It's built well. It feels like it's been built well. Uh, the way one person uh, who's well, you know another instructor instru uh, described this gun um, was it was a professionally built gun or it was built to professional standards. Um, and yeah, I mean, I can, you know, it definitely has that feel. I've never had a problem with this gun. Um, you know, the only time I had a, a problem is if you use the ATS, the, the long 12 round magazines, and uh, you're using steel case ammo, um, I have had an occasional feeding problem. But if you're using it with, with if you're using the 12 rounders with, with brass, um, never had a problem on that. Okay, so, uh, so I, I use like, the 12 rounders, I definitely fill up with brass, but, um, like the one I was just shooting now, that was a seven rounder, even even the nine rounders. Uh, never had any problems shooting steel case ammo with these magazines. Uh, you know, the gun itself shoots steel case just fine. Uh, it's a small gun, it's not, you know, I mean, uh, you know, when you're shooting this, you can feel that, you know, you can feel like I can feel it on my knuckle over here. I mean, it's not the most comfortable gun to shoot just by virtue of the fact that it's so small. I mean, I was hitting those targets at about 21 feet right there. Um, you know, I, I, know, I guess I was getting about half the hits on target. Um, so, it, it, you know, it's a good shooter. I mean, uh, now, um, 
I am looking to get into something different. Um, I am looking to get a gun about this size or even a little bit smaller if I can that shoots 9mm uh, and takes a red dot optic, uh, specifically the, the Holosun 507K. I've already ordered that optic even though I don't have a, 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 uh, a gun to put it on. Uh, the reason is because you know it's available right now. I'd rather get it because, uh, like right now, like other optics that I that I want and I have guns ready to put on them, I can't get those optics to back order. So I said, you know what? Since the 507K is available, let me just let me just put the order in, let it come, and then down the road, whenever I find a gun that you know I want to put it on, um, I'll get it on there. But that's where I want to go with with this uh, with my with my everyday carry situation. I want to. Um, you know, I want to get a small optic. I find that, uh, you know, I, I, I really enjoy shooting pistols with, with optics on it. Um, if I, um, you know, like on any given day, I'm always going to want to shoot my P80 over this, okay? Because the P80, you know, I have that house on 507. You know, I really like shooting it with the optics. I shoot it well. You know, I mean, at this distance, you know, even at twice this distance that we're just shooting, I, I'd be going 100% on the target uh, with, with the optic. The other thing that I find is that, uh, at night, okay, um, what happens is if you get into a situation where it's where, where it's getting like um, when you're in low light situations, not dark, you know, not bright, but low light situations, I find that you know with my with my 49 year old eyes, uh, sometimes I have a hard time finding uh, finding the uh, the sights, okay. But uh, if I have a uh, um, if I have a, an optic on it, I have no problem, you know, finding the, uh, the, the finding that red dot. Um, you know, in low light conditions. So, you know, in, in daylight like this, yeah, no problem. I can come up, I can find those sights really easy, really fast, okay? Uh, if it's like really dark, yeah, I can see the, the night sights pretty good, but when it's kind of like in the middle, right, or if you're like in a, in a shady area, um, if you're in a shady area, I'm finding that, that I can have a little bit difficulty finding those, finding the sights. So uh, that's why I know I have to get into a, a carry pistol with an optic on it. I care more about getting an optic on the gun than, than carrying it with a light. Uh, the reason is that, you know, and I did a pr prior video on this. I mean, yeah, most bad things happen at night, but you can't use your gun, you can't use a light on your gun to identify something, right? So you have to use a pocket light. Um, so I always carry a pocket light, but you know, what, use your pocket light to identify. Once you identify a threat, you can see the position that it's in. Uh, you determine that you that you that you need to defend yourself with with, with, with your gun because that is now a deadly threat. Um, you know when you go to your gun, I mean, are you, are you fumbling with the light or are you fumbling or are you trying to go straight to the trigger? Um, and what I find is that on small guns like this, you know they're going to have an even smaller light with smaller light buttons. Um, so I, I think that the the, the 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 natural thing to happen is that you're going to go straight from your from your pocket light to you know to your to the trigger on your gun um if you need to use the gun you're not going to go from pocket light to pistol light to trigger so it goes straight from pocket light to trigger um i think that that's the natural way the natural way things are going to work out um you know in a in, in, in an emergency type of situation so that's why I, I i'm you know i don't care so much about getting a light on this gun also uh it, it's, it's really hard to find holsters uh, the holster i'm carrying uh, this this pole craft uh, I got it from Amazon twenty three dollars works great I'm really happy with it uh, it covers the trigger guard okay um, so to me that's the safety mechanism of this gun I don't I didn't get the version that has the the safety uh, the safety uh, that you know because this gun does come with a with an option to buy it with a safety it's really small tiny if you carry this gun with your safety on you're not going to be able to get it off when you want to get it off, okay? Because it's really small, really hard, you know, especially if your hands are a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit wet or a little bit sweaty, you're not going to get that safety off. So uh, I advise not using the safety. The only reason why they, I think they put the safety on this gun is because in some states they can't sell the gun unless it has a safety on it, okay? So that's the reason why I think they offer it uh, with the safety. So if, even if you have a safety, I would carry it with the safety off and rely on the holster as the safety mechanism, right? Because as long as this is in the holster, you can't get to that trigger. Uh, this gun is, you know, that's, that's the safety mechanism. And when I go home at night, I, I don't take the gun out of the holster, okay? I take, I pull my belt off like you saw me do earlier in the video, and I put, take the whole gun with the holster, put it in its safe, right? And then the next morning, 
when I, when I go to my safe, I put, you know, once I get dressed, I take the gun inside its holster and I clip that onto the belt, okay? So I don't remove the gun from the holster until I get to the range and I'm, I'm ready to practice, okay? Um, so as an everyday carry gun, I think this is a great gun. It is a little bit bigger than the LCP uh, that I was carrying before. Uh, I can definitely feel the grip stick out a little bit. A couple of times I noticed like if I bend over, sometimes my shirt might pull up and get caught like this. So the gun can become exposed. You know, whereas before when I carried the LCP, which was a little bit smaller, I never had this problem. I never had a problem with my shirt kind of coming up and sitting on top of this. Um, and the gun becoming exposed, whereas with this gun, sometimes that will happen. So if I bend over, you know, I just make a conscious effort to make sure I pull my shirt down. Um, so, uh, but it, it's a decent size. I mean, one of the one of the options I might consider uh, is the, the 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 Glock 43, which is a little bit smaller. Um, you know, I'm not sure. The other option I was considering was the Sig 365. Uh, that's another option. I, I think what it's going to probably come down to is which gun. Can I find first, um, you know, uh, you know, but it has to be capable of taking the the, um, the house on 507K. Okay, because that, that's the starting point for me right now. Because, you know, in my opinion, shooting is a seeing thing. The seeing part is more important than the touchy feely part. Okay, I don't, you know, I'm less concerned with how the gun feels in my hand. I'm more concerned with being able to see the optic, get that on target, get the bullets to go where I want them to go. Uh, one of the things I did do is uh, I am planning to build a, um, um, a, a P80 version of the Glock 43. I, I, I believe it's called the uh, PF9SS. So I already got the frame for that, and uh, you know it's almost impossible to find a slide for that. Um, so as soon as I'm able to find a slide uh, that you know red dot, you know a, a slide that will take the uh, that uh, uh, house on 507K. As soon as I get the slide for that. I'm going to start practicing with that, and then, at, you know, you know, basically at, at that point I'll make a decision. I don't know if I'm going to carry that gun, um, but, uh, you know, I might get a gun similar to that. So uh, I hope you guys found this uh, video helpful. I just wanted to give you guys my, my, my feedback as far as using the Shield 9 as an everyday carry gun, you know, after having been carrying it around for about eight months, you know, and, you know, uh, you know being in a position where I can practice with it on a, on a pretty regular basis um, it's a good shooter it, it's definitely not as easy to shoot let's say as a Glock 17 or a larger gun you know um, with a larger gun I can I can I'm definitely more accurate with a larger gun um, you know with this one over here it's just because it's smaller you know you have to make more of an effort to squeeze the gun a little bit harder you know to keep this thing from from moving around uh, but hey I think like I said at 21 feet I got about at least 50 percent hits on those are, those are four inch targets over there. So at 21 feet, I got at least 50% hits on four inch uh, steel plate targets. So um, if you guys got some comments, put it in the comment section. If you're not a member, subscribe. I'll talk to you guys soon.